<laughs> Leave it to Loxton to be four years late to a theory. So recently in a video, I mentioned the common theory that the roles of Illima and Mina were switched around at some point in development of the Gen 7 games, Pokemon Sun and Moon. A theory that is best summarized by this image by Batabid. After mentioning the theory, I realized that I had never actually covered it. And it's been covered plenty before, and back when it was topical, too, because we were still in the middle of the Sun and Moon saga. But then Game Freak recently, somewhat, released a Japan-only concept art book all about Sun and Moon, and I realized, oh yeah, yeah, now that, now that Sun and Moon is over, we have the whole picture, so there's bound to be some stuff I can add to the theory or add to the discussion, maybe. So maybe I should cover it then. Plus, this way most of the work is already done. Just gotta add one thing to justify an easy video. <sighs> well, anyway, let's get into it. This is the Ilima and Mina theory. Surface level, it's easy to see how this theory started. I mean, just look at these two. Pink is the color most commonly associated with fairy type. Ilima has pink hair. In Pokemon X and Y, the games just before Sun and Moon, we see the fairy type gym leader, Valerie, and the fairy tale girls. They all have these creepy fairy-esque eyes. Like It's a specific eye design that only they, the fairy type people, have. Just like Ilima. Nobody else in Sun and Moon has these eyes in this style, and up until Ilima, this style of eye was synonymous with a fairy type trainer. Now look at his main Pokemon, Young Goose, Okay, Komala, gotcha, and Smeargle, the, the artist painter Pokemon. Out of all of the normal type Pokemon, seven generations worth, it's a Smeargle, the painter. Ilima has nothing to do with paint, but you know who does? Mina. She's literally a painter. In fact, she's an incredibly relaxed, tired, and even spacey painter. Meaning that she not only has similarities with Smeargle, but she also has similarities with Komala. Having these two Pokemon would be perfectly fitting. The lazy Pokemon that's always asleep. Her, she's being lazy and spacing out all the time, man, and is a painter, so these two... Circles. In fact, Smeargle and Kamala as a pair even match up with her overall design and color palette, let alone her personality. And only having these two Pokémon would make her work really well as an early game character, like Ilima, rather than a later game character, which is what she wound up becoming. So what Pokémon does she have, then? Well, Clefki, Granbull, Wigglytuff, Shinotic, and Rabombi. Nothing to do with paint, nothing to do with art, nothing to do with her design or personality, besides maybe Shinotic, because all great artists are on something, you know? Uh, so now, do her Pokémon fit better with the design and personality of Ilima? Admittedly, while not as definitive as the other way around, I for sure can argue yes. Ilima is sort of the mom friend. You can see it in the way he moves, his facial expressions, and even the way he speaks. He's very loving and caring, and isn't too fond of battling. It's clearest when it comes to the way he speaks. Here's some quotes. <clears throat> you look so very delightful in battle that I had no choice but to summon you here. You've arrived with such exquisite timing. So, you've spotted me sticking up one of these lovely stickers, have you? What a lovely battle you showed us there. Ilima is polite and charming. He sends hearts aflutter in the anime. He is pleasant in nature to a fault, getting on the nerves of those in Team Skull. And he believes in empathy above all else. Now tell me that that doesn't sound like it fits the fairy type perfectly. Fairy type is all about love, care, and empathy, as well as being a bit more sophisticated than most, pleasant and kind. And what fancy trainer would be complete without their pedigree snubble? It's perfect. On top of this, the anime mentions that he flew to Kalos to study abroad, essentially 
the fairy type capital, where we see plenty of other fairy type users with the same style of eyes. And looking to Mina's Pokemon, Wigglytuff and Shenotix pinks match Ilima's hair, and the scarf that Robombi wears matches his sweater vest. Speaking of which, who wears such a low-cut sweater vest? Who wears capris? Oh, okay. I'm starting to see the picture now. Oh, here we go. Time to ruin the comment section. Illuma's gay as heck. <laughs> Are you suggesting that all gay people go to heck? What? No. I, I, I say as heck all the time to just mean a lot. Okay? Okay? You're just trying to get me canceled. Stop it. It's trying to get me boned. <laughs> Let's never speak again. I remember people talking about this back when the anime aired his episodes, and even when his art was just first revealed. Not once in the franchise do they ever expressly state Ilima's sexuality, but anime has a way of alluding to things. They could never outright say it because Pokemon is a global franchise, they want their games and anime to be allowed everywhere to reach as many people as possible, and everywhere includes places like Russia, China, and the Middle East. Places that don't allow media that depicts such terrible things like people liking each other. But the violence is okay. But this doesn't mean that they won't imply things, for at least a touch of representation. Anime has a particular way about this. You see flamboyant guys in anime all the time, quite the characters. Often it's a bit over the top, but... There are those who themselves are over the top. But anyway, when it comes to anime, there is some debate as to whether this particular depiction is helpful or not, but that's not what we're here for. Basically, just know that Japanese media likes to hint at such things rather than outright express them. Sometimes it's over the top, sometimes it's more subtle. Either way, it gets fans talking, and any talking is good publicity. And in the case of Ilima, I certainly remember people talking. <laughs> oh god, the talking. Of course they made him the normal trainer, as if to say that's normal and okay. No. They're pushing an agenda. Oh, but that does answer some things. But first, let's talk more about the character traits Ilma has. You can't exactly argue that he's traditionally the most masculine of males. In fact, every personality trait we mentioned earlier is most often associated with women, making Ilima quite the feminine man. Which you can also see in the way he dresses, his color palette, and even in the way he moves. Holding your hand close to your chest, looking down, eyes half open, smiling, sparkles when excited, his overall body language just screams shy and reserved. These are extremely common traits associated with anime girls. Add on tight capris and a hair bead, and the power of visual suggestion compelled many into thinking that, at the very least, Ilima is not the most straight. And we can actually get a bit more scientific with it too. The concept art we recently got expressly states that Ilima is left-handed. Why does that matter? Well, because over the last 20 years there have been loads of studies looking into how handedness affects people physically and psychologically. And one interesting thing that they found is that homosexual people are significantly more likely to be left-handed. I'll link to a Wikipedia page below that links to a dozen other studies that mostly came to similar conclusions. But one of these studies found that homosexual men were 82% more likely to be non-right-handed than heterosexual men. So here, with Ilima, we have a character whose very appearance and demeanor to many suggests some level of non-heterosexuality. And then, that very same character is the only expressly left-handed character in Sun and Moon, and left-handedness, statistically speaking, makes one more likely to be homosexual. Yeah, yeah, it's heavily implied. But what does that matter? Well, in all likelihood, there are going to be some angry people in the comments upset that I'm even bringing up such topics. So, 
could you imagine what would happen if the most heavily implied to be gay Pokemon trainer was a fairy type trainer with fairy eyes? It may not seem like the biggest deal to some, but that's exactly the kind of thing that triggers internet outrage. And more people who only half sorta care will jump onto the bandwagon just to feel like they're helping with something. It's not exactly good for PR, especially when fairy is one of the many insults for those in the LGBT community. So even though no harm or insult was likely intended from the designers at all, it is a bit stereotypical. I mean, anime, arguably, has a problem with stereotyping all sorts of people. It just can't seem to get out of its own generic tropes these days. So, I have a feeling that this might have been what happened. Early on in development, they're working on the designs and planning out all the characters and everything. Ilima was originally the fairy-type trainer because it fits everything about him, and Mina was originally the normal-type trainer because Komala and Smeargle match up with her absolutely perfectly. I mean, her Pokeballs have paint on them, even. But because Pokemon is a global franchise, they have a number of people whose entire job is to make sure that what they produce is acceptable in cultures all over the world. These are the people that removed Brock from the anime at first. Remember that? They were worried that the West would see Brock as a racist character, so second season, they swapped him out for Tracy. Only to later find out that they were overreacting, people loved Brock, and so they brought him back. But the Sun and Moon characters were shown to these people, whose job it is to figure all this global stuff out, and they were immediately concerned about Illumon. While everything about him is fine and even common in Japanese culture and media, the West tends to be more sensitive about such stereotypes, especially these days. Having representation is seen as a good thing, but not when that representation comes at the cost of stereotyping. It may not seem like the biggest deal to some, but it potentially would have been a big deal to some. And that could always blow up into a PR disaster. So rather than risk it, they said, let's just change something about Ilma. The options potentially being to no longer imply such things about him. Maybe make him female. Maybe just not make him that kind of guy. Or they can keep that design and all the character traits for some representation, but just change what type of Pokemon he uses to make him less of a stereotype and to seem more normal in the Pokemon world. And so, rather than do a lot more work, they simply swapped the roles of Ilma and Mina. It was easy enough to do. I mean, if you look at the concept art for all the other characters, they are pretty obviously the type that they are. Kiawe is obviously fire, Mallow is obviously grass, Nanu is obviously dark, Lana is extremely obviously water, and so forth and so on. But Mina, well, she was a normal trainer. Being normal means nothing is extremely obvious because she's just normal. She's a plain old painter, so she can easily fit into just about anything. And while Ilima's hair and demeanor implies fairy, it doesn't imply fairy quite as much as Valerie did. With a few tweaks, you can easily just say he's normal. He's a bit plain, the colors are muted, whites and browns, it's fitting. So the swap was easy. But of course, we still cannot confirm that this happened at all. It's entirely a hypothesis for now. Though I'd love for an interview to come out in the future and confirm or deny this theory. But as it stands, I for sure see it as very possible. The pieces all fall together nicely. But what do you think? Think they were swapped or not? And if you think they did, do you think it was a smart move to do so? Let me know down below, and until next time, be respectful and never stop using your noggin.